Hey everyone, Jessica here from Creators Couture and in today's quick video, I am sharing an update with you. So a lot of you guys are familiar with my color blending brushes, but if not, uh, it all started with this Modern Impressionist Color Mixing Brush Studio. And what's cool about this um, brush studio and this technique and the brushes that I develop is it lets you use the pattern stamp tool to create really cool color blending strokes and you don't have to do a thing. So it's super fun. It has so many possibilities. Um, and it was so popular, in fact, that it caught the eye of Adobe. And I did a collaboration with them. And you can actually download a free brush sampler of these brushes on Adobe Create. And I'll link that down below. And I can share with you just a little bit of the color blending brush strokes. Like I have, um, I have a free blog post where you can download a bunch of brush freebies. So you can kind of get an idea here of some of the different uses you can use um, the brushes for. They're so useful for design, illustration, accents, um, you name it. And there's just a million possibilities. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I had launched the Modern Impressionist Brush Studio all the way back in, I believe it was 2000 and, oh, I want to say 16. Oops, let's quit this we can here, um, pop over into Photoshop. But I've come a long way since then, and I thought I would revisit these brushes and bring some of my knowledge now into the brush studio. And so what I did with most of these brushes was I uh, brought in the pressure sensitivity and adjusted some settings so that you could have, um, you can control the flow with the pressure sensitivity and that makes a really big difference and I'll show you some before and after strokes. Okay, so I'm going to show you some before and after of the brushes so you can see how that they've been refined. So here's one brush before and then now you can see that it has these transparency controls so you can go from a light flow to a strong flow in the same stroke using your pressure sensitivity. And here's a brush before, which looks really cool, but if I um, use a light uh, pressure sensitivity, the brush looks like this. But now if I use a light pressure sensitivity, the brush looks like that. So it's much more refined and naturalistic. And here's a brush, which is actually quite a cool color blending brush. I really love um, how that looks, but now, before, when you use light pressure sensitivity, you have a brush that looked like this, not as good. But now, if I use a light pressure sensitivity, that looks really cool. And you can still use the strong pressure sensitivity as well. And we've got more brushes here. Here's one before. This is a really cool brush. I liked how it turned out. But now, again, we've got that pressure sensitivity so we can go from a low flow and you can really see that texture now and let's look at the, this one was actually a really cool brush and I love how it blends those strokes and I you know you can see you using it as like um, well for a lot of things but even for like grass or something like this it could look really cool if you're doing something naturalistic but before when you do a low stroke it looks like this uh, low pressure sense, low pressure. But now when you do low pressure, it looks like this and you can build up that pressure and have a strong effect or a light effect. And let's scroll through here. I got all these ready. Here's a brush before. It's actually really cool. It has a little bit of a watercolor look, but now, but you know, if you do the low pressure, it's smaller but it's not, it doesn't change the opacity, but now we have that opacity control, that flow control. So much more refined. That's 18, here's 13. Um, before, it was actually a cool brush stroke. I really like it. Um, but if you go low flow, it looks like this. And then if you go high flow, it looks like, or a, a low pressure and high pressure. But now, if you go low pressure, now it's just much more refined and you can still do that high pressure and have that high contrast within the brush strokes. And then let's go to seven. 
Here's before. And this is like a lighter pressure. So it doesn't really look the same brush when you do light pressure and heavy pressure. But now if I do light pressure, you can, it looks much more like the same brush. And I've refined the color blending just a little bit. That's seven. And let's see our here's before. And this looks really cool. I was happy with how that turned out. Excuse the slight lag on my computer. Your brushes will not lag, but I'm still rocking my old computer right now and doing some upgrades um, while I decide which computer I want next. But the only downside right now is that um, recording has been a little bit slower. And then here is like the same brush stroke, but improved. And so we've got that, you know, the flow, we can control that flow from dark and light um, using our pressure sensitivity. And then I'll throw a couple more down. Here's before, which is a really cool one and I use a strong color palette. But if I use a light um, pressure, it doesn't look so cool, it looks like this. But now, if I use a light pressure, now we can build that up and it looks like much more, um, I don't know, realistic and refined. So I'm really happy with that. So, you know, you've got that varying, the pressure sensitivity now is in the right spot. And the last one here, let's have a little fun. This is a, like, this one I use a rainbow color palette. I love it. Um, but that was before. And then if we use low pressure, it looks like this. So not quite the same. But now if we use low pressure, we can get that opacity, that, that um, you know, the light, the, the pressure, the flow control um, works more with the opacity now. So much cooler. And I'm super, super excited to share all this um, update with everybody for free. So go ahead and um, check your inboxes because I've already updated the products all over the, um, my site creative market, you know, different marketplaces. So get your update. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And then also keep an eye out because I am going to be updating my, um, the English garden, the Palm Beach garden party. And I'm even working on a slight update for the artistic autumn. So stay tuned for that.